Hello, in this video we're going to look at solving some logarithmic equations. So the basic idea when we're solving logarithmic equations is we want to get our problem in the form of a single log equals a constant or two single logs with the same base equal to each other. So our first example we've got here log base 3 of the quantity 5x equals 3. That one's already in the form of a log equals a constant. And so now to get rid of that x that's inside our logarithm, we want to convert it to the exponential form. So our base here is 3, so that's also going to be the base of our exponential. Our exponent is across the equal sign. So we'll get 3 cubed. And then the argument inside our log is on the other side of the equation in our exponential form. So 3 cubed is the same thing as 27 equals 5x and then divide both sides by 5 to get that x by itself and we get the uh, answer 27 fifths. Now we are asked to check for extraneous solutions. The main thing we need to worry about is if it is then the domain of our log function because remember we cannot have a negative quantity that we take the log of. But if we check and plug back in the original log base 3 of 5 times the quantity 27 over 5, we want to know is that equal to 3. And log base 3 inside the parentheses there, that simplifies to 27 and 3 to the third is equal to 27. So that one works. All right, our next one is in that other form. Here we have 1 half times the log base 9 of x equals 3 times the log base 9 of 4. Now this one we could move everything onto one side and write it as a single logarithm equals a constant, um, but probably the easiest thing to do on this one since they do have the same base, they're both log base 9, let's go ahead and write these as a single log equals a single log. In order to do that, we need to get rid of these coefficients, the 1 half and the 3. And the way we do that is to use the product rule for logarithms. Remember, we have that the log base b of x to a power is the same thing as that power times log base b of x. Well, we're actually going to go backwards on that. We've got our coefficient out front we're going to write it in the power form. So instead of writing this as 1 half times the log, we're going to do log base 9 of x to the 1 half. And then the same thing on the right hand side, we're going to write that as log base 9 of 4 cubed. Now we have these two logarithms that are equal to each other. We can think of these as backwards. We um, have solved exponential equations that we get in the form of a to the x equals a to the y tells us that x has to equal y. Well, that actually works the other way as well. And so we can think of this as the two exponents in a base 9. Well, an exponential base 9 and a logarithm base 9 are inverse operations. That's like multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5. They undo each other. And so this left-hand side is going to simplify to just what's inside that argument, x to the 1 half, and the same thing on the right, what's inside the argument is 4 to the 3rd. Go ahead and simplify that. 4 to the 3rd is equal to 64, and then to get that x by itself, it's raised to the 1 half, so we need to square both sides to get that x by itself, and 64 squared is equal to 4096 and we can check that by plugging in the original and this one let's go ahead and pull out the calculator and so when we type in that left hand side one half times log base 9. The log base, you can find it one of two ways. You can either go to your math menu and scroll down to log base. This is assuming that you have a TI-84 
or higher, the TI-83 calculators, you'll have to use the change of base and convert that to either natural or common log. So log base 9 of 4096, so that left hand side is approximately 1.89, and then if we plug in the right hand side, the other way you can get that log base 9 is to do alpha window, and it's on that little shortcut menu under alpha window. And the right hand side there is 3 times log base 9 of 4, and we do see that we get the same number on both sides, and so we have that one checked. All right, our next example, we have log of x plus log of x plus 9 equals 1. Now, we need to get this written in one of the two forms that we did on the previous two examples. We either need to get it where we can raise both sides to the same power, so we've got a log with the same base, or we need to get it in a form that we can convert to that exponential form of the equation. And this one I think is going to be easier because of that one. We're not going to be able to get it with just the two logs equal to each other, so let's go ahead and combine the left hand side. Remember if we have log base b of m plus log base b of n, we can write that using the product rule for logs as log base b of the product m times n. So here we can write this as common log of x times x plus 9, still equal to 1 on the other side. Now we have this in the form where we started the first example, so we're ready to convert this to the exponential form. If we have a common log, a log with no base down here, it's an understood base 10. So our base here is going to be 10. And then we go across the equal sign to get our exponent, and then circle back around to get the other side of the equation. So we get 10 to the first equals what's inside that logarithm, x times x plus 9. And what we have here is a quadratic equation, so we can solve it using any of the methods that we have for quadratics. So let's distribute that x. We can go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides, or we could complete the square. But this one will factor, and that will probably be the, the quickest, most efficient route. So if we factor x squared plus 9x minus 10, that's going to be x plus 10, x minus 1. And so we get two possible solutions, x equal negative 10 and x equal positive 1. We do need to check those. And the main thing that we are looking for is, is our x value in the domain. So log of negative 10 plus log of negative 10 plus 9 equals 1. Well, log of negative 10 and log of negative 10 plus 9 are both undefined. And they're undefined because we cannot take a log of a negative number. And then this one simplifies to a negative 1. We cannot take a log of a negative number. And so we're going to have to throw negative 10 out. And if we try log of 1 plus log of 1 plus 9 equals 10, <clears throat> we can use our calculator again. Common log, we don't need the base, we can just use the button log of 1 plus log of 1 plus 9 does simplify to 1. So our answer is just x equals 1 there. All right, here we've got to do a little bit of rearranging. We have log of 5x plus 3 equals 1 plus log of x minus 3. So in order to get these logs where we can combine them like we did in the previous one, we need to get them on the same side. So let's go ahead and subtract that log of x minus 3 from both sides. We're left with a 1 on the right hand side. Now remember if we have a subtraction between our two logarithms, we can write that as log of the quotient. 
numerator is what the is the first argument and our denominator is the second argument and again this is a common log so it's an understood log base 10 so this is going to be 10 to the first equals that fraction we do need to multiply both sides by the denominator so that we can solve this for x when we distribute 10 we're going to get 10x minus 30 on the left on the right the x minus 3's are going to cancel and we're going to have 5x plus 3 so if we subtract 5x from both sides and add 30 we get 5x equals 33 or x equals 33 divided by 5 we can check that on our calculator log of 5 times 33 over 5 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get 1 plus log of 33 over 5 minus 3 oh I'm sorry I forgot to add my 3 on this one. Let's try that again. There we go. Now we get the same number on both sides. So our answer is x equals 33 fifths. Alright, let's do one more. Here we have the natural log of x plus the natural log of x plus 12 equals 3. Just like we saw in the um, example right before the previous we have two things added together on the left so we can use the product rule to write that as a single logarithm and this one this is a natural log so remember it has an understood base e and so when we convert this to the exponential form it'll be e to the third power equals what's inside the parentheses there And we get x squared plus 12x. This is a quadratic equation. That e cubed there is a little intimidating, but e is just a constant, so e cubed is just a constant. Um, we can go ahead and move that to the other side and use the quadratic formula. And so we get x equals negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times a times our c is negative e cubed all over 2 times a and if we simplify underneath that square root 12 squared is 144 negative 4 times 1 times negative e cubed is going to be positive 4 e cubed all over 2 and we do get uh, we have a greatest common factor of 4 that we can factor out there that's going to leave us with 36 plus e cubed and the square root of 4 we can simplify so we can write that as 12 plus or minus 2 square roots of 36 plus e cubed all over 2 and dividing out those 2's from everything leaves us with potential answers of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus e cubed. Since we are plugging this back in to just the straight natural log of x, this answer has to be a positive number in order for it to be a valid answer. So we need to figure out which if any of those are positive, so if we do negative 6 plus the square root of 36 plus e cubed, to get e we're going to do second and that natural log button, and that does give us a positive number. If we plug in the minus, we get a negative number. We have to throw that one out, and so our answer here is going to be negative 6 plus the square root of 36 plus e cubed. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.